the team that exerts the most effort, the team, right, the best 11 that exhibit that, that effort time and time again, till the whistle, till the whistle, till the whistle, that's the team that's going to prevail. Pursuit and hustle overcome all things. What we do, it's, it's not for everybody. Life isn't always pretty, but you keep pounding the rock, you keep persevering, you stick together, good things will happen. A culture of service, it's not about me, it's about serving the people around me, and it's about lifting them up and, and doing what's best for them. It's about an unbelievable work ethic as the key to, to success and to doing great things in life and serving people. And it's about a set of core values, honor, courage, and commitment, and loyalty. Passion and enthusiasm is football. The team that brings the most energy. They gotta match our energy. We can't ever go into a game at Grand Island Senior High trying to match somebody else's. That's right? Because that's something we control right here in our heart. They have to match our energy. Don't let them match it. We're gonna play harder, faster, smarter, stronger, and longer. Tonight's one of those nights where you guys make memories, okay? You'll remember. Seize the moment. You get very few. They're fleeting, okay? You're already done with week seven, practically. They, they disappear on you, okay? Big stage, seize the moment. Play big. We are better than them in every single one of those capacities, but you have to go out there and show it every single time. Play a complete game every single time. Okay? Every single play is the most important play you've ever played. And run through the gates of hell right now to never let them down. Never let them down. Okay? Make it a four-quarter gut check and play with one heartbeat.
it's a culture. I mean, not only is it the like developing your strength and your conditioning and everything like during the summer and as the season goes on, but it also develops a toughness. It builds us as men. It builds it builds character. It builds toughness. It is a huge part of our tradition. I've always wanted to make sure that my sons and my extended family, um, all those young men and women that I've adopted over the years on these teams, to to have the tools to be a better men than me, to be better people than I ever was. If we don't arm these kids with the skills to be champions for life and to overcome adversity that they're gonna face, then we're, we're failing them completely. We're missing the boat. It's, it's different than anything else I've ever done for sure. Like in other sports, you wanna work really hard and the coaches like encourage you to work hard and if you're a pretty hard worker, you're gonna work hard. But in, in football, it's like, it's kinda like a have to thing. Like if someone's slacking off, like, that, that just doesn't happen. Like in other sports I've been a part of, if someone's really talented and they slack off, they'll get away with it. But you could be the best player on the team and if you're not working hard, people are gonna be all over you just because of this, the culture we've been taught since we walked in day one freshman year. And that's special, I've never been a part of someone else like that. Yeah, the program is specifically designed for the specific players and we have to rely on each other throughout the course of the off season and I know I've, I've puked a bunch during Woodway and after squats and stuff but it's just uh, getting used to that and just developing a mental toughness throughout the season and throughout the off season and just grinding with all your brothers. It's more mentally than it is your body being in shape. I mean if you can go at it 100% uh, every play you're a tough son of a bitch but that's what it takes to play out under football. These kids are going to face some stiff challenges, and I'm confident that every kid that comes through our program and finishes will be able to meet every challenge that, that comes in front of them. Coach Swanson is a big part of our program, and um, just the, the standard we have to be, or standard we're put on in the weight room, it's, it's like no other. Uh, Coach Swanson's always talking about like the standard, and the standard is excellence no matter what, and he expects a lot out of everybody. But I think that's kind of the, a part of the key to the success of like guys like me and Grant and James that weighed under 200, six feet tall coming in, and now we're way over 200 gaining weight and gaining good weight just because he's expected, expected us to do stuff that most coaches wouldn't expect you to do in the weight room and nutrition and stuff like that. It's a hard workout, but I mean, everybody else is doing it. They're helping you through it. And to those people who say it's too hard, it's, it's really not even that hard. You're just making it way harder than it has to be. People are a little naive to think, well, if we didn't have Coach Swanson or we didn't have a, a great certified strength coach, we'd still be OK. Things would still go good. And you can think what you want to think, but that's pretty, that's pretty naive thinking. He has his program set out to help us get bigger, better, and stronger. I mean, he does more for us than, I guess, most of the coaches do. We don't have anywhere near the program that we have without John Swanson. I can tell you that right now. Our conditioning has to be up to par, and Swanson helps with that. All our Coaches help with that, we do conditioning during practice. It all pays off in the end. No, it's it's not even it's not even that hardcore. You just gotta show up at a certain time. It's I mean that's life. You have a job at seven o'clock, you have to be there before seven o'clock, you're not gonna show up at seven o'clock and for the people who get mad when they show up at seven and they're late and we have to run for it, it's I mean that's what you're supposed to do, you're required to be there and you know the lifting program it's not hard, everybody does it. It's not like you're you're an outcast, you can do what you want, you have to do it. It's different for football than it is for other sports. I think we're expected to do a little bit more just because uh, football is like more physical sport than a lot of sports are. We run a woodway and it gets me. Those drills suck, but it's, it pays off. I want to say sucked, but it's all hard. I mean, not one workout is, oof, that was easy. I mean, some people throw up, you know. I just hate it when I'm the guy that throws up. 
I throw up in the off season more than anything. Woo! It's more of a brotherhood too, you know? It just, you're on the team and it, you're a sense of something, you know? You got something to classify yourself as. It's just building better young men and we use football as a vehicle to do that. Uh, his work ethic makes him special. Um, he's just incredibly committed and dedicated and he won't compromise. And Coach Swanson doesn't want any credit, he doesn't want any accolades, and he wants to divert all attention to the kids and that's what makes him special. I think uh, Coach Swanson's a man of honor and integrity, and he's never gonna compromise that for anybody. He really feels like he's the gatekeeper of Islander tradition. I can't state to you in words that would be accurate how important Coach Swanson is to our program. When I interviewed for this job, I had four different interviews that were each an hour long and I had five minutes with Coach Swanson. They brought me up, showed me the weight room. Hey, this is Coach Swanson. I knew when I shook his hand and I looked him in the eye, I'm taking this job if I get it offered because I think we can do something pretty special because we have something that nobody else has. And uh, it'll be a, you know, they say everybody's replaceable. I'm replaceable. You know, nobody's irreplaceable and John would agree with that, but you aren't gonna find another one as good. And in a society where mediocrity is kind of the norm, you're gonna get criticized when you have high standards. That's just part of the ball game. And uh, we have high standards and, and uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. And that's, I'm sure, not real appealing to some people. Um, I'm not much of a compromiser and he's not. It's a match made in heaven. I think, that, you know, the most rewarding is um, when you see a kid who exceeded their own expectations, who um, overcame an obstacle, who did something they never thought they could, and there's a, there's a look on their face. Uh, it isn't always a smile, but there's a glow uh, in their face um, that says, you know what, I, I just did that and, and uh, I'm somebody because I did that and I'm important and I'm special. That's, uh, that makes it, a lot of it all worthwhile. That's pretty cool. We produce leaders and we produce uh, kids that make a positive impact and, and we challenge kids and they meet it every time. What's up, bud? Coach Swanson is, he is Islander Athletics, period. You know, when he decides to hang it up, that'll be a pretty difficult day for me. I've been thinking quite a long time since you chose your theme for all my brothers um, of what that meant.
And, you know, Coach the other day talked about, you know, you got to give up yourself, you got to give up self. And that's true. We, we've used Enom for a long time, right? It's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about Coach. It's not about you individually. It's about we as a group, as a family. And for all my brothers, it's a pretty significant example of that whole concept. That this season and what you've just done and what you will do is not about you as a group. It's about everybody who's ever put that purple uniform on. Last year, um, a great example, and I've, I've mulled this over for a long time, because I don't know if you realize these kind of things happen. They happen all the time. Your last playoff game was, was televised, it was on. You could get it on the World Wide Web and get a live feed of it. And I know one young man who was watching it was Tom Swanson. He got privileges at the academy and watched it in his dorm room on his computer. And as he's watching it, he's, he's got two Navy football players who are roommates, the quarterback, Keenan Reynolds and Anthony Kennedy, the two, two studs. Keenan Reynolds is going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate this year. And they start watching, they're starting to hoot and holler. And after a few minutes, a few more Navy football players in that room, they're hooting and hollering for you guys, they're yipping. And as the noise out goes out in the hallway, a bunch of track athletes, Thomas's teammates come in, they're watching. You got an Islander thousands of miles away, he's living and dying on every play with you. On that same evening, Sam Foltz is on a road trip for Nebraska. He doesn't have media privileges. So Thomas is texting him the play-by-play -play as he watches at the Naval Academy. He's texting Sam. Hey, Sam, here's what's going on. And they're connected to you. And Sam is texting and telling somebody else. And it was just the whole evening was all revolving around you, living and dying with what you guys did because they cared so much about you. They cared so much about the program. And they wanted to be a part of it. And they wanted to help and support you. After the game, I don't, you probably didn't notice this guy. He's in, in uh, camo uh, coveralls. And he's just wandering around. He wandered around here for a half an hour. His name is John Wemhoff, one of the great, great, great players for us. But just couldn't leave the field. I don't know that he ever talked with any of you, but he's just wandering around with that blank stare in his face because he hurt so bad for you. And he hadn't played for, I mean, shoot, I coached him when I first came here a long time ago. But he wanted you guys to win so badly, he wanted to be part of it, and he was down here with you, and he was living every play with you, and after the game, he just wandered around like you all did. It's as if he just played the game himself, and he poured himself out on the field. You see, what you do matters, fellas. They're watching you. Island Nation is watching you, everything you do. They're watching what you do on the weekends. They're watching what you do in the classroom. They're watching what you do here, and they care absolutely with all their heart, mind, and soul, what you do and who you are and what you become and what you accomplish. For all my brothers on three, one, two, three, for all my brothers. It takes a, an army uh, to coach a football team, and I feel like uh, I'd go to war with, with my staff anywhere, anytime. How we doing, man? You like the weather? You enjoying this? Oh, you're not allowed to talk back to me? I see, I know you're type hard to get. All right, whatever, whatever. I'll get you, though. I'll get you before it's all said and done. Let's go! Squeeze them! Got it? I don't really care what a little, I don't know to go there. I'm, I'm on film, so. <laughs> How's it going, man? Are you, you expecting a quote or something? Set, go! There's my quote, set, go. Get it? I don't even have to film it, it doesn't. Set up, hard, go, hard. Brother. You get that, I'm sorry, McLean. Gosh darn it. <laughs> You gotta edit all that. That's not right. Basically, I like yeah. that. When it has, I don't know if I like that. Either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all weird about it. Squad. Feel this. This is the semi jackknife. I have to feel this and swing. Oh, oh, you out. Get up. You guys gonna get hurt? Seriously, like, where am I at? Seriously, like, what happened? Bubble boy. That's always good. <laughs> hey, you guys gotta control your tempo. Let's go! Nipple grabber? Yeah. Okay, switch guys. It's getting weird. Hey, 
hey, NHL hockey champs of, of Grand Island right here. When it comes to ball hockey, can't be beat. You tell Coach Wells, Coach C, opponents, they all lose to us. Dead meat. No, 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 put it backwards so it's like it gets your sweat in the closet. You can't have the closet, oh, you gotta put it. Oh, yeah. oh. Jackson. <laughs> you can like that when he gets it back. Oh, come on, man. He's gonna have like 18 hours of blackmail material on me. <laughs> got my nose hair. Yeah. So you can't go to 200 feet of a shopping mall. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Selfie stick out of my Get that nipple shot. Yeah. What kind of a camera is that? Scientific fact that the best way to warm up is to stand motionless as close as you can to another human being. Thus, during football season, the new warm-ups will be to stand as close as you can for 45 minutes, and then we'll play football. Warm-up. What just happened? It's like a four boys. Yep. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna go take <laughs> Can you bleep that out? No. Hey, <laughs> if you put that on, if you put that on the tape and don't warn me to not have my wife watch it, I'll kill you. <laughs> Do the full round? Yeah, and then I'm sitting here hitting it away. Yeah. No, he threw it like. Wait for it. Wait for it. Go, go! Load your holsters. Load them. Load them. Cock your elbows. Go! Cut! Go! Cut! Get out of there! Uh, <laughs> out of my face. I just have to play Omaha North for uh rematch against them from last year. Oh, I never forget, big boy. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I remember going into the year, both years, I was, people would ask, are you guys going to be good? Are you guys going to be good? I said, well, you know, I don't know if we'll be great and I don't know if we'll be good, but we won't be bad. We're going to be, we're going to be a good team and, you know, some teams can't say that they got better and better towards the end of the year, but I mean, I feel like both years we just, we I mean, we lost that West Side game both years when we just got better and better towards the end of the year. Those kids are under pressure. They're under pressure to perform. They're under pressure to be almost perfect. People are telling me good luck, saying you're going to play good this year and stuff like that. You feel like you had a lot of expectations, but about a first play in, you just, that all goes away. I mean, going into the game the whole week, I couldn't focus, but first play in it's just done the rest of the year you don't really feel it anymore go GI buddy that's all I can give you it's easy to fall in love when you fall in love you know you're done you got easy eyes to hunt in the world above need your blood in the cold veins of the richest man who play you way to steal a hand Collar. We're hard nosed. We're tough ass. Band of brothers. That's what we have always been since 1896, and that's what we are today.
tired, they're playing tired. It's who has the most guts. When it comes down to who wants to fight the longest, right? And if you got each other's backs, you can push each other to do things that you can't do on your own. Let's go! Kevin the Goat Kahoy. Well, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. The Goat, his acronym is the greatest of all time. That is Kevin Kahoy. The thing about Kevin is he has so many nicknames. We we call him Goat. We call him, I mean, Spider Monkey. I'm not an excellent Spider Monkey, though. Can, do you have more Spider Monkey within? Next game, next game. The end of that game. Watch this guy. Watch what he does. Where That's how you do it. Monkeys come from? Well, they technically come from what? Africa, South America, Brazil, Brazil. Know, like, where'd you come? Like, where'd you oh, come with it? it's just you know, this is a magical thing. Nicknames don't just nicknames just come out of you know wherever. Spider monkeys. Last year it was mountain lions. Sometimes you know our old line, old line nickname used to be kicking silverbacks. I don't know where's that come from. Mountain gorillas. He just has unlimited nicknames. He's like Brett. We call him LaFonda. We call him Kim. It's just, just one of those people. Uh, I don't know. Strange names and some strange signals. I don't. We didn't even have a, a signal for Midget. That was just. It was just a play we came up. Magic Midget was the name of it. It was a sneaky little play. Caddy, just caddy. We had. Uh, I'm not doing that one. That's a bad one. That's not appropriate. I'm not doing. Okay, it was called Trojan. Cowboy. Zoro. Zoro. I, I, I tried going like that, but I got overruled on that one. Detroit. Giants was like. Giants was like this because Barry Bonds was. Packers, we had Aaron Rodgers double check. Oh, slap. Oh, Daytona. That was, that was going deep. Bartender. If I ever thought that we were going to throw a touchdown, I'd yell bartender. I only did it a couple times. I think I one of them I threw a pick, so I stopped from then on. I'm not going to say it, but I, whenever I said, whenever I called to play F Shack, I had to say Dirty Mike and the boys. That's all I remember. Yeah, and when we were we were really on a Friday Night Lights kick, we'd, uh, we'd have the line whenever they were going to make a certain call. They had to say characters from Friday Night Lights. We had a game on, or on uh, Halloween. And whenever they made a call, they had to say trick or treat. Sometimes I'd just say random stuff just for the fun of it. Random signals, just go like this, looking out. Honda. Oh, yo yo. We had yo yo. Nitro! 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 
Nitro! My favorite defensive call is Nitro because I just love the way uh, Coach Jones yelled it. Nitro! 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 My favorite moment probably was when uh, Matt Marsh started laughing. Oh, that was funny. We found out that Marsh was really ticklish. No, we just couldn't control ourselves. He was just laughing so hard. Yeah, I don't even remember who started that. Who started it? Alan was tickling him. It was kind of you had to be there moment. I was in the I was in the other locker room and they were in the other one and all of a sudden I hear this just loud crackling laughing noise like I can't even explain it. It was just so high pitched and I wasn't Yeah, it's like it was like tickle me all over pretty much. It was just like I, was, I had no idea what was going on. I have it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen somebody laugh like that in my life. It was awesome. He gets mad now though, you can't tickle him anymore. He's just rolling on the floor laughing. God, he'll probably beat me up for saying that. But... That was one of my favorite ones. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs>Giant sub magic. Giant sub is our play call. Magic is magic man right here. Throwing the pass. They're beautiful. Perfect. Like I don't think anybody could have thrown a better ball than Kevin did on those two plays. <laughs> I was two for two with two touchdowns. It's probably true. <laughs> Better not forget it. I mean I guess I get a little bit nervous knowing the yeah, that's not his position, but that I'm like, oh yeah, he's the GOAT. GOAT can do anything, it's in God's hands now. Put it on the dime every time. He had a better quarterback rating than Pierce, higher complete completion percentage and everything. And maybe he should've been the quarterback the whole time. <laughs> you didn't want to look, but you had to look. I really thought Kevin should have been quarterback instead of Pierce, but I mean, I'm, I'm not the coach. I mean, I guess Kevin throws it when nobody's expecting it, but whatever. It was weird because you'd, you'd get like three or four new plays every week and you'd be like, well, how am I going to learn all these in three days, basically? And you know, by, the, by Tuesday, you have them all down without even really thinking about it. You just get up the line, you know them all. It's weird. Hold the rope.
Take that! Get him! That's it! That's it! Yeah! That's it! Yes! Yes! Oh my God! Are you like a champion and champions play with their whole heart and soul they play with their brain guy they play together it means some later on in life it means something and the, the the things that you guys are picking up now it carries over into your other life I owe a lot to football I mean it's it's gotten me places where I never would have gone without it you know so it, it means a lot okay so I don't want to get over dramatic in any of that, but it really does. Um, you guys are playing the greatest team sport on the face of the planet. You guys are lucky. Any of these guys out here, including myself, would probably give their left to put on pads again and run out there and kick somebody's. Okay. Touchdown Islanders.
heart of this team is is impressive. Okay, and we're all going to have to hold the rope even tighter, aren't we? Okay, we're going to have to hold the rope even tighter for Tyler and for for guys that aren't with us. Okay, for guys that are a little banged up. But uh, great effort tonight. You know, our whole staff is a range from a bunch of different coaches and their different techniques. And I mean, it all meshes together good. I mean, you got Tomlin, who's a very respected and a, a strict man. Uh, somebody asked me today, Coach, is this a big game? Well, I don't know. Is squaring off against the schoolyard bully a big fight? Freaking A right it is. It's a freaking huge game. The way Nebraska playoff system is set up, every game's a huge game. They, they, they set us up in districts, but to be honest with you, every game's a district game. The way Nebraska high school football's played, every game is vital and critical. And then you have uh, somebody like Coach Cloutier, who expects the most, but we'll, but we'll have fun also. Everybody is working <laughs> for the weekend. So insecure with this with himself. He's not comfortable in his own skin. We're gonna get him help after the season. Stay tight on and help for Coos. I saw you pan down the left, the back side. That's good. I respect it. I would too. Let me check out. He's like a stalker. He's just sitting there hanging out. He's real. He's all into that first person stuff. <laughs> So should we, all, we should all come in one day with cameras ourselves. Film the filmer. Like looking behind the curtain. Just because you're cutting glass, it's not a bad thing. God, he's so violent. Oh, it's a big hot dog. You're over here showing me your areas. Or I don't cross the line of physical violence. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not good. I'm not good with the camera in my face. If I come over here and, and talk about this, my man, Coach C, he's going to win the line Coach C award. He's ready to go down. He's going to put a helmet on tonight. With the these Miller South Patriots. That's how he rolls. That's how he rolls. Oh, you're a sidle. You sidle up on people. They're all sneaky. I'm, those are like wrestling shoes or some other silent ninja-like shoe that... <laughs> See, you're going to blackmail me. I know this. One of these yeah, days, go I'm going to get an envelope. Uh, I'm telling you. Toast it. Toast it up. Rockstar for a rockstar. 25 years. It's longer than he's been alive. 24. Are you doing the math right now? Yeah. I had to think about it. <laughs> I do teach algebra. Obviously not very good at it. You're gonna want to So you know twenty five is greater than twenty four. Today it is. <laughs> Publish it to the world, get me fired, end my life, whatever, bro. It's cool. Hey, you need to you, you nibble. You you I did, but you then nibbled. I spit it out. Yeah. He watches and films it in his underwear. Yeah, I saw him outside my bedroom window the other night. It really creeped me out. <laughs> you saw the big microphone come Yeah. <laughs> I think some things are better left as a mystery that way. Nobody's going to completely understand. Oh, man. We get coaches that not only are great guys, but they know the game of football. They know what they're doing. And they'll do damn near anything to make you the best player you can be. Usually, I mean, at a lot of football programs, there's the top notch, and he's the first word nobody else can say above him. And I feel like at Grand Island, everybody's, everybody's got an equal say in the coaching staff, and I feel like everybody has a lot of knowledge of their position and helps everyone out that they can, even if, say, it's a defensive coach helping somebody out with an offensive, offensive drill. I feel like everybody was able to help everybody. You know, all the coaches knew what they were doing. They all worked really well together. There was nobody button heads or anything. They were all... They all gelled together really well. You know, Todd was always there on the sideline. He's always there for any of us that has injuries or maybe have something wrong with us that he can help us out. And I feel like a lot of programs, they don't have that. And I feel like we were, we were really uh, lucky to have that. And I've got an incredible staff surrounding me, which we, we coach together. We don't coach, they don't coach for me. Uh, I, I get kind of upset when I hear, yeah, I coach under. Coach T, no, nobody coaches under under me. We coach together. We all contribute to the greater good. 
as players, we don't just play for ourselves and play for the alumni, but we also play for our, our, uh, our coaches too, because they, they put in so much work. There's not a coaching staff in the state that works as hard as our group, and it's just humbling experience being able to play for them as well. They have no idea how hard they work. I'm more close to Coach Jones because he's my position coach, and, and he knows our expectation every day, and um, he, you know we always get along, and we, we, we always know that we can come up to him and say whatever was on our mind, and, and if we have a question, he's always there to help us. Oh, I feel so humbled to be with the staff, with, especially with this Islander staff. There's, like I said earlier, there's no other team in the state that works as hard and works, you know, days on end like our staff does. There's not a, during the season, there's not a day where they take off. They're in there even Saturday and Sunday. And they spend time away from their families. They spend time away from their hobbies just to be with us every day. And that really means a lot. And I, I didn't really, you know, pick that up until my senior year. Just knowing that they, they spend time away from their families. They spend time away from their, you know, they, they could be doing other stuff, but they decide to do it with us. That really means a lot. And I'll, I'll forever use the stuff that the coaches have taught us, you know, honor, courage, commitment, and loyalty. That, that's forever in my head. And, and to treat others with respect, it's, there's nothing like it. And, and the training staff, they're, they're there every practice. They're getting us water. They're doing all the dirty work. They're taping our gross feet and gross. I, I mean, I've had so many bloody scars on my face and my arms. And, and they're always the first person to clean me up on the sideline. And, it, it means a lot that they are always there to help us. I always feel like we, we need to create a whole that's greater than the sum of the parts. That's always the goal. I, wanna, I want the team to go one notch or two higher than our physical God-given capabilities will allow us to go. The assistant coaches I have create incredible relationships. Our coaching staff takes pride in that. and. Obviously, I don't directly coach every kid every day, uh, but they feel a love and a respect for those position coaches. You feel support every time you walk out on the field. Good kick. Yeah, yeah! There you go. Got it, baby. Got it, baby. Let's go now, Bunchy. Coach Tomlin means the world to me as a coach. Yeah, hands down, any coach I've ever had, never had a coach as good as Coach T. I, that's that's the key to Grand Island football. That's why I've been pretty successful. The, a big reason is definitely Coach T. Coach T's composure on and off the field is like no other. And, and no, no matter who he's in contact with, he he's just extremely friendly. And, and uh, just his quiet confidence is like no one I've ever been around. His, his hard work is like no other either. Just the amount of time he spends. Um, just watching film and on the on the field, he just he just goes the extra mile in whatever he does, and that's so admirable to all the players and all the coaches and everyone he comes in contact with. And he's got so much integrity. If he says something that's going to get done, and this is the way it's going to be, then we know that's the way it's going to be. Because he's just a man of integrity. He's like a kind of a no tolerance kind of a guy. Better get done. I mean, it's a, do it the right way or don't do it at all. Type of guy. Hey, I don't want to see this play. Yes, we gotta compete harder. We ain't getting a push. We ain't getting a push. I think the the biggest part for Coach T is he always talks about how hard we have to work, and he doesn't apologize for asking us asking us to do a lot. He thinks that's the right way to do it, and the reason the reason that works is because he does more than anybody else. Like his trucks always. First one there, last one to leave. Puts in more time than anybody else does in the building. Just the hours that he puts in. And if he if he can put all those hours in himself and work that hard, it's fair for him to ask a lot of, out of us. So we all have a lot of respect for him. I don't even know if Coach T goes home at night. Coach T just holds us to a higher standard in the weight room. There's all kinds of other head coaches in the building, but you don't really see any of them in the weight room. Coach T's in there every single day just more committed, so you kind of feel like if he's more committed, we got to be more committed than anybody else in the building. If you want to play anywhere who's who's going to make you into not only a good football player, but I mean, I don't really want to say like a better man, but Coach T, I mean, he doesn't just teach you football things. 
I mean, as a parent, they, they've got to be happy knowing that he's teaching things that we're going to take for the rest of our lives. And, you know, our work ethic, work ethic was huge that he taught us. And, I mean, just like he says all the time, bringing your lunch pail to work and just doing your job and doing it right and, you know, going above what people tell you all the time and just being that guy that everybody can count on and everybody knows will do what he's supposed to and, you know, never forget where he came from. Well, I, I admire those those kids. I mean, you don't know how much I admire them because that's that's not rewarded in our society anymore. That that's a thing of the past. You know, playing your role uh, to the best of your ability and and serving your fellow man and um, you know doing the very best that you can do. He sets the bar, you know, and everyone has to try and go for it. Coach T is, is like a second father figure. Um, like growing up, I've known him almost my whole life, and seeing not only how he develops players, but as he develops like players into men as well, um, and just shaping people for the rest of their lives, not just for the football field. He means obviously everything to our program. He's helped build our program. Like he, he is the key factor. Coach T has been so supportive. Even since when I was younger, I was I was ball boy up with when my brother's team was playing. I was ball boy since like fifth grade up until eighth grade. I was out there around him all the time. He was the nicest guy. I could call him when I was younger if I wanted to go on the away games. I just ask him. I was so nervous to call him, go on the bus ride with him. Not only like, am I just a player, but I also have like those fatherly expectations and whatnot too. Um, and it just it, it adds expectations on top of expectations. I would say the biggest challenge is I don't want to let anybody down. That's my biggest nightmare is I don't want any kid to leave our program without having a positive experience. I don't want them leaving not being a better young man than when they came in. I want to make sure that they know we care about them um, as students as, and as people uh, more than we do as players. You know, as we got older, he was just, he was so good at making everybody comfortable, you know. He'd yell at you, but that's, I mean, it was all helping you out. It's nothing like he's ripping you because you're bad. He wants you to be really good, and some people don't understand that. And the people who do, they take it to heart, and they get better and better every day. And I can't really thank him enough for everything he's done for us, like all these seniors. The way the kids work inspires me every day to work even harder, to not want to let them down. I. You know, I GI's my home. I mean, this is this is a place I want to be. I love, and uh, I'm a blue collar guy. I need to be in a blue collar school. I just want to develop in them the love for each other that they want to do it for each other. I'm not so sure that they want to do it for me or our staff, and if they do, that's all well and good, but that's never the goal. Roll my brothers on three. One, two, three. Roll my brothers. Um, the goal is that they do it for each other and that they build lifelong relationships and, and that they understand that they're accountable to somebody else, that somebody's dependent on them. And uh, hopefully that love that they develop, that brotherly love, that brotherhood, whatever you want to phrase you want to tag to it is what ultimately they comes out when they play. Yes! Yes! Oh it's an incredible character on their part, incredible will, and I think just the, the family knowing that I'm a part of something um, that I might not ever be a part of again. Relentless effort. Find your 20 times. Everybody can give 20 times greater, okay? Everybody's 20 times greater than what they think they're capable, then find your 20 times tonight. Uh, it's an honor and a priv privilege. I can't uh, stress that enough. And, and what uh, these players give me and our coaching staff and our program uh, is far greater than what I think I give them. But I, but I hope that they got a great experience in our program, and I hope they know that uh, our coaching staff and I am here to serve them 
for as long as we're drawing breath. Really, I think the biggest, the, the change that not only to me, but to everybody in the season was Omaha West Side. We should have won it. We just, it was, but I'm, I'm also happy for that loss because after that, it was a different team. We were a different team. We were better than ever before. Definitely the West Side game. Like we, we'd had some good practices up to that point, but out of it, we probably have two good practices a week, maybe three, really, really inconsistent. And we were getting away with it because we were beating teams that weren't that good. And we played a West Side team that beat us the year before, and they were they were okay, but we were better than them. And we we played bad. We made way too many mistakes. We weren't consistent. I played really bad, and just there's that soul searching moment. Like, was this how it's gonna be? What are we gonna do? And then that that's when we turned it around. Like a lot of you guys started stepping up, and it was it was that's that's the that's what needed to happen. The Lincolns and Omaha's have, and, and I know most of them will look at us and, and, and look at us and say, you know, you guys don't belong. You don't belong. And to be honest with, if I were in their shoes, I'd probably look at Grand Island and say, you don't belong too. But as I said, we, we know that our key is not necessarily physical prowess, but it's all the intangibles. It's, it's the character and the work ethic and the, the pursuit of excellence and, and just the fanatical um, will to survive. Well, who are we? We're GI. We're freaking blue collar. We choose to be uncommon. That's what we choose to be. That's who we are. We play for freaking championships. We live by a code. And we play for our brothers. We're GI tough all night long. That's what we do. Serious, you put the thing in front of me one more time, I'm gonna shove it.
if you hear the ball carrier, he's still on his feet. I would say I was most worried this year about one single game, it was Westside. Because we had practiced not up to the standard for about a week and a half. And I knew that we were probably due to get exposed. And that was probably, in retrospect, a good lesson to learn for us.
That one? Yeah. Busted me cut. Don't you're right. Accepted.
get, I'm only used to basketball. Nice. Nice. We get one block a year, right? One at, at minimum, at most, I mean. <laughs> and that one is awful. Take dinner. <laughs> Take <six. laughs> First guy to ever pay it out. Blaine Morrow, interception for a touchdown. Blaine's pick six. Yeah. Blaine, you stay head up, Blaine. <laughs> that was awesome. I was going crazy. Pretty heroic. It had been a while since we'd had a defensive score. We've got a lot of takeaways. Our kids always run to the ball well. We tackle great. We've made a lot of big plays on defense, but it's been a while since we've got defensive scores. Well, we had three, I think, that game. Well, I guess we should start before the game. Coach Jones actually predicted that that play would happen. And Blaine, he always talked about how he's going to get that pick, how he's going to get a pick on a screen or on on a pass. Well, like I didn't get off the ball at all. That, like get off the ball very well at all that play and. I just read it was like a pass and the quarterback didn't throw it very high and I just barely had a jump and I, I just kind of like caught it, I guess. It was pretty good coordination. Like, swatted it and then caught it underneath. Quarterback drops back and, and Blaine gets his hands up and pops the ball and it, it straight up and then drops right back into his hands. It did not look like a gazelle. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a couple stumbles in there. He juked out somebody though, I'll give him that. It's like, and then he like jumped over the quarterback, something like that. Yeah! Go, baby! Go, baby! He juked out the quarterback. It wasn't graceful, but he got it in there. So. Yeah, just fumbling, tumbling in the end zone. I saw the number on the corner of my eye, and it was 75, and I was like, oh my gosh. Last regular season game, he ended up getting it. That's crazy. Yeah. And I had a mini stroke. I literally got lightheaded. I was screaming so loud. <laughs> I was seeing stars and shit. I was like, wait, is that 75? I was like, what the heck? Turn on the, the what kind of Jets Blaine Morrow has, uh, what kind of Jets any lineman has, and just took it to the house. When I saw Blaine pick that, 
I felt like I was running every stride with him. You know, and I know our, I know Coach Jones and Coach Cloutier were running right there with him too. I mean, yeah, and that was pretty, that was a pretty neat moment. Blaine comes over to the sideline and says, is this what it feels like to score a touchdown all the time? Because you guys probably go crazy all the time. I was just so happy. I don't think I've ever been that happy for a touchdown. It's a, it's a defensive line's dream come true. You know, I was so happy for him. Those guys in the trenches, I mean, they work. And what's every kid's dream when they're playing in the backyard? Score touchdowns because everybody's the quarterback, the running back, the receiver. Nobody's going to... Nobody's playing pickup football wanting to be the lineman. Since, like, as long as I can remember, Coach Jones would say every once in a while, if anyone ever gets a pick six, we'll take them out for dinner. The reward if you score a defensive touchdown uh, with the defensive ends is that you go out to eat with Coach Jones. I believe Coach Jones took him to the buffet. That was the deal. I don't, I don't know if that actually happened, but that's what, uh, that was, was what was supposed to happen. Hopefully it's buffet. All you can eat buffet. I don't know, probably the buffet though. So I'm gonna go buffet somewhere. Get my money's worth. Yeah, get his money's worth. <laughs> probably wasn't much left for the rest of the rest of the restaurant. I've seen what Blaine does to restaurants. Y'all ready to get busy? Woo -hoo! Buttermilk biscuits, here we go. Sip the flour. Well, this this is one, round one of like ten, right? <laughs> GoPro me in the Chinese restaurant where I'm trying to get my fat on. So me and Jim are in Grand Cap Big right here. Once a week. Dig in. That one's for free. You gotta pay for more. Pay per views coming soon. You know what I'm about. It's been said that today's generation is soft, lazy, unaccountable, selfish, and entitled. Things like honor, character, loyalty, and integrity no longer exist. What if I told you of a world where these things are still very much alive? A place where only the strongest commit to be a part of something bigger than themselves. A place where accountability means everything. To live and perform to the standard is to live and to fight for all my brothers. A world in which nothing is easy, every inch you have to earn. An attitude of Enam, it's not about me. Our world is a nasty, unforgiving, and unrelenting place. There are no guarantees. Grind, fight, sacrifice, and bleed for all my brothers. You never know how strong you are until it's the only choice you have. This is our world. It doesn't require your understanding. We 
do it for the man next to us. To never let him down. And we stand together. There's nothing on this earth that can tear us apart. And we will give all that we have to uphold tradition. We've committed to fight for the man next to us. Our world isn't for everyone, but it's our world. We will give all that we have for all my brothers. My name is Tyler Klein. I'm number 75, and I was a left tackle. My name is Aldo Martinez. My number was 66, and I was also a left tackle. We graduated in 2009. Go Islanders! Hey, Islander Nation. My name is Logan Almond. I was number 17. I graduated in 2009. Uh, I'm Tanner Harold. I graduated in 2010. I was number 77. And uh, we just wanted to say good luck on Friday. We know you guys can do it. Have fun. Play your hearts out, and uh, we'll see you after the game. Hello, I'm Jake Dobervolin from the class of 2012. I wore number eight, and uh, good luck this weekend and go 11. Hey guys, I'm Nick Wenz. I graduated in 2012 and I played left tackle and DM for the Islanders. I just want to wish you guys the best of luck this weekend, so on north. Being able to play in an Islander uniform is always special to me because I got a chance to line up with the guys I knew every Friday night and play a game that I love. Now I'm blessed enough to play football at the next level, but it still doesn't compare to all my good times as an Islander. So I hope that all you guys go out there and leave it on the field because it's truly one of the greatest moments of your life. What's up, Islanders? Mike Tallman here. Islander alum from 2004 to 2008. Wore the jersey number number one. Played running back in DB for the Islanders. You guys have a special opportunity on Friday because you are one of three teams in the last 24 years to make it to a semifinal game. Some of you are playing in this game for the second time. So I want you really I want you guys to really cherish this game and understand the magnitude and how big it is and how special it is. 90% of the Islanders in the last 24 years, some of the greats, some of the great college players, some of the great high school players never got a chance to play in this game. Never got the opportunity to sit in the locker room, strap it on, lace the cleats up and go out there and play in a semifinal game. So I want you guys to really cherish that and understand how big it is and I want you to go out there and play every single play like it is your last. Don't take a back seat to anyone. We can play right with these guys, we can beat these guys, and we can accomplish the mission together. So I want you to know that all the Islander alums um, are behind you. We all love you and we want, we want to give you our best and we hope that you do well. Good luck, man. Hi, this is Scott Siegel, class of 2003. I was at the game last year versus Omaha North in the state semis. You were the better team, no question. Tonight, no question again, you are the better team. Go out there, get it done. Next week, turn right back around, get it done again. Let's get it done. Go Islanders! Hey Islanders, Michael Roscoe, number 75, class of 2011. I uh, just wanted to wish you guys good luck against Omaha North Friday. I'll be there cheering you on. Go 11. Islanders, it's Justin Brown, number 24, played running back, graduated in 2010. Just want to wish y'all good luck against Omaha North on Friday. I'll be there to watch it. Go 11. Hey Islanders, number 53, Tyler Klimek. I just wanted to wish y'all good luck against Omaha North this Friday. We'll be there cheering you on. Go 11. Hey guys, so I'm making you guys a video this time instead of writing you a letter. Uh, except now you guys are playing the state semifinals. I just wanted to wish you guys good luck. And uh, basically, uh, give you guys a little bit of, I'm not going to say my wisdom since I'm not I'm only a year you know, ahead of you guys, but I read up on this quote by Vincent Barney who said, the greatest accomplishment in life is not never failing, but rising after you fall. Last year, I was in the exact same shoes as you guys, the exact same spot, you know, we lost to this team that 
I'm not gonna say it was better than us, but you know, they beat us, and it was honestly one of the worst feelings ever. Like that tore me and all the other guys up, and it wasn't as much as losing the game that hurt. It was seeing all my brothers. Like we were down. It was seeing all those guys. Like it was one of the worst feelings ever, and. Most of you know that you guys were all there. So honestly, I just I want to let you guys know when you guys go out and step on that field, like, you guys need to leave it all on that field. Like, it doesn't matter if you think you're going to kill this team and go on to the next game. It doesn't matter. You guys need to show up ready to play. You know, don't, don't just do it just because you guys want to win stay. Do it because. You guys need to win state. You guys need to prove to everybody else around you, you know, all the metro, those metro schools, everybody that grounds in your high, they're strapped up and ready to go to war. You know, everything's, you know, Grand Island's a little hick town, but you know what? I, was, I grew up in that town. I grew up playing Grand Island's your high football, and I'm gonna damn, if you call us hicks, you call us whatever. You can show up to play, so go out there tonight, kick some ass, and leave a name for yourselves. Ah. Hey guys, Jake Gadowski, former Islander number 77 here, graduating class of 2007. Just wanted to wish you guys good luck in your game this week. Uh, you're making us all proud, and want to remind you to cherish every moment you get out there. So let's go get to the state championship, and go Islanders. Hey Islanders, Andy Gadowski here, number 58. I graduated in 2010. Just want to say good luck to you on Friday against Omaha North. I'm sure Coach Tomlin and his staff has you guys prepared to beat them and anybody else in the state. Uh, good luck and get after them on Friday. Corey Swantag, class of 2009, number four. Just wanted to wish you guys good luck. Go 11. Hey Islanders, this is Bon class of 2012, number 54. I just want to say how proud I am of you guys. It, I'm hearing great things about you guys. Sadly, I haven't been able to make any of the games, but hopefully this Friday I'll be able to come watch you guys play. Go 11! Hey, what's up, Islanders? This is Dalton Reba, class of 08, former offensive lineman and linebacker. Just checking in to wish you good luck in Somaha North this week. I'll be pulling for you. Give them hell, boys. Hey, guys, my name's Lewis Kalen. I graduated in 2010. I used to play corner and I wore number six. I just want to tell you guys good luck this weekend against Omaha North. I know Coach G's got you guys prepared and ready to kick some ass. Hopefully I'll see you guys next week in the state championship game. Go Islanders. Braden Taylor, uh, linebacker 2009. Um, doesn't get much better than this, boys. Semifinals, number one team in the state. Shut them up. Go GI. Hey Islanders, it's Chris Sinkbile here out of Omaha. Uh, played the 04-05 seasons for Grand Island as an outside linebacker uh, and a running back. Um, played my college ball at Omaha uh, and then finished up at Kearney in this defensive secondary. Um, some of you may recall I came out and uh, got to speak with you guys prior to the Millard South game uh, and then actually got to watch you at home last week against Millard West. Uh, Nice job, well done. Um, you guys are uh, are not finished, and uh, you got a big game coming up this weekend. Uh, a little bit of an opportunity to uh, get some revenge on last year. Um, you guys are a talented team. Uh, offense, you're explosive. Defense, you guys fly to the ball. Uh, attack, don't blink. Play assignment football. Go out and hit somebody. Islanders, this is R.D. Spies, former center, defensive end. Graduating class 1998. Uh, congratulations so far on a good year. Looking forward to seeing you guys taking it to the next level. Uh, big good luck to all the players, coaches, and staff members in New Island. What's up, Islanders? This is Ethan Lemberg, number 53. Played in 2013, graduated 2014. Just want to wish you all the best of luck Friday night. Go get it done. What's up Islanders, this is Dana Jones coming at you from Des Moines, Iowa, class of 2004, number 11. Wishing you guys all the best in the 2014 playoffs and looking forward to seeing you in the Class A State Championship game at Memorial Stadium. Good luck. Go GI. Pete Lewis, number 21, class of 2006. Go 11.
What up, fellas? It's Jory Crouch, class of 2008. Played wide receiver and safety. Uh, I wore number two, just like my boy Pierce. I just wanted to say to the seniors, enjoy the ride, because once it's over, you could wish you could have it back. Uh, good luck this weekend. Make all the alumni proud and go get that W. Hey, my name is Trevor Otolevich. Um, I was number 11, played for the 2013 team, uh, graduated 2014. I just want to say good luck to you guys playing Omaha. I know what it's like playing them in the playoffs. It'll be a great one. And I, I can't wait to be there. I'll be there watching. Just good luck and I hope to see you guys in the state uh, finals. And from there, um, we'll just be going and see you guys going to the championship and winning it up, getting one for Coach Tomlin and all those guys. I can't wait to be there supporting you. Wish I could have been on that team, but I mean, we didn't quite get there, but hey, you guys got all the potential in the world. Hey guys, my name is Nick Hines. I uh, played tight end war number 88 for the Islanders. I graduated in uh, 2009. I just want to say good luck and uh, do your best out there, and we're all proud of you guys. Hey Islanders, it's Josh Wheeler, offensive line graduated in 2011. Just want to wish you guys good luck against Omaha North. I'll be there cheering you guys on. Go 11! Hi, my name's Steve Murray, and I was number seven, clear back in 1978-79, and I was the starting quarterback for the last state championship team, and I'm here to wish you good luck. Uh, Kyle Wadlevich, number 68, graduated in 2012. I uh, just want to say good luck to you guys, and uh, go Islanders. Hi guys, Bo Jepson here, number 21, graduated 2010. Just want to wish you the best of luck Friday night as you go out there and play the Alma North Vikings. I mean, if you've been here before, the coaches have prepared you well mentally and physically, I know. All you need to do is go out there and get after them, have fun, and play hard. My name is William O'Malley, class of 2011, number seven. Good luck, guys. Take state and go 11. Hey, this is Zane Frefferly, class of 2006, offensive lineman, number 53. I um, just want to wish you all good luck for them on this Friday when you head over to Omaha to play the Viking. Um, I know you guys are going to represent yourselves, represent the town and the school um, to the greatest of expectations. Um, and just go 11 and give it everything you guys got. Tommy Velasquez, number 94, class of 2008. Cool luck out there, Islanders. Play your heart out because you might not get a chance like this ever again. Leave it all on the field. Hey guys, this is Kurt Mann. I graduated from senior high in 2002. I just wanted to wish you guys good luck versus Omaha North on Friday. A couple things I want you guys to remember as you take the field. First thing, uh, remember all those sacrifices you've made throughout the year. You guys have put in a lot of hard work, put in a lot of time. Don't let all that go to waste uh, when you take the field. Second thing, you know, play for each other when you guys take the field. For you underclassmen, play for those seniors. Uh, this is could be the last game you guys ever play with them. So. Uh, Make them make them proud. Play for them. And you seniors, um, same thing. This could be your last game. Play for those underclassmen. Leave a legacy for them going forward. Uh, the last one's pretty easy. Just go out there and have fun. Uh, these opportunities don't come around very often. You're going to remember this for the rest of your life. So just have fun with it. Enjoy the moment. Hey, I'm Mitch Swanson, number 65, class of 2007. Just wanted to wish you guys good luck. I'll be listening to the game on the radio. Go luck. What's going on, Islander fam? Just here getting ready for the Wisconsin game here in Lincoln and just wanted to shout y'all a message. I know y'all getting ready for a big game on Friday. Can't wait to watch y'all. I mean, I've been out of senior high now for three years and you guys have done nothing but hold up the tradition, you know, and chisel your name in the history of, you know, Grand Island football with these last two years of being in the state semifinals. I know that you're going to be going into some hostile territory, but it don't matter, man. When it's a big game like that, it doesn't matter. You just got to be the better team on the field that night. I don't care who they got on the field. It doesn't really matter. Show them how Grand Island plays football, man. Don't worry about anything else. There ain't no pressure on you, fellas. They're the state champs. They got all the pressure on their shoulders. Go out, have fun, leave it out there on the field with your brothers, play for one another, never back down, have each other's backs, and always go 11. Hey, my name's Callan Jones, number 34, 2002, graduate of Grand Island Senior High. Just wishing you guys luck. Uh, go out there and play hard. Um, everybody around the Grand Island area and that's been around the program is rooting for you. Uh, we know you can do it. Uh, it's a game. Go out and play it. Have fun. Make plays. Uh, do it for the guy next to you. Do it because you love him. Hey, go out and uh, have a great game and good luck. Hey, guys. Will Rogers over here. 
class of 2012. I just want to say good luck. Finish what you started this year, guys. You've been doing a great job. You've been paying attention all year. It's been fun to watch. Uh, just uh, good luck. Go get the respect you deserve. Go level. Boys, well, Thomas Fonson here. Um, most of you guys know me. I was 65. I was an Islander. Graduated in 2012. Um, just wanted to take time to tell you guys good luck this weekend. Go beat Omaha North. We know you can do it. I'm um, one step closer to winning the whole thing. So keep pounding the rock. Keep carrying on the tradition and doing great things. And Islander Nation has your back. Go out there and do it, boys. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Play for all your brothers. Knock them out. Boom.